welcome to the last lesson in this series about writing skills. Today we are going to finish up with a quick checklist of the most common mistakes people make when writing. Many of these are errors that we make not because we don't know better, but because we often get tired or stressed or we stop paying attention. This is exactly why proofreading is so important. It gives us a chance to catch these mistakes and put them right before the writing goes to the reader. If you had to make a list of the most common mistakes you make when writing, what would be on this list? This is what some learners had to say. Capital letters, full stops and commas, there and there, where and where, sentence length, sentence patterns, direct speech and punctuation, question marks, basic rules of Concord. Sure, that is a lot to remember. Let's look at a list of common mistakes so that we can work through it slowly and carefully. Capital letters for people and places, full stops and commas, there and there, where and where, sentence length, sentence patterns, direct speech punctuation, rules of concord. As you will see, most of these are grammar points that you know. Perhaps you just need to be reminded. First of all, we have the rules about capital letters. My brother's name is Bob. Bob must get a capital letter because it is the name of a person. Here is a different type of proper noun. My uncle lives in Empangeni. Empangeni must get a capital letter because it is the name of a place. We always use capital letters for proper nouns. In other words, the names of people and places. Now this one I know you know, but all the same, let me remind you that. A full stop indicates that a sentence has ended. A new sentence begins with a capital letter. On the other hand, a comma doesn't mark the end of a sentence. Commas are used when writing a list or series of things in a sentence. Here we have a shopping list. Can you see where the commas are separating the items? While we are on the subject of punctuation, let's have a quick reminder about question marks. Question marks show that a sentence is asking a question. These sentences can start with words like who, what, where, why and when, or they could be sentences like do you feel better today? Could you help me carry this heavy box? What you must pay attention to is the fact that question marks act like a full stop. This means that you shouldn't follow a question mark with a full stop and make sure that you start a new sentence after a question mark with a capital letter. Another point that you should always check when proofreading is that you have got the punctuation right for any direct speech you have used. Direct speech is when you write the actual words spoken by someone as a quote. There are some simple rules to follow when using direct speech. You use a comma to introduce the quote. Then you open the speech marks, write the words spoken and then close the speech marks. You can also have direct speech where the speaker is mentioned after the quote marks. As you can see, the rules are the same. This time you start by opening the speech marks and then the comma goes before you close them again. The next thing I want to remind you about are the tricky words that pop up in English. Words that sound exactly the same but have very different meanings. One of these pairs of words is there and there. There is a word that indicates something belongs to two or more people. It is the plural of his or her. For example, this is their car, which means the car belongs to them. This is quite different to there, which shows where something is placed. Yeah. <laughs> Morning girls, can you tell me where Sarah is please? She's over there. Don't forget the difference between these two words and always remember to check that you've used the right one. Where and where are also two similar sounding words, but with completely different meanings. 
Tomorrow night I will wear my new shoes to the party. Where did I leave my math books? One of the last things to check is whether all the verbs match their subjects. Sometimes this is called the rule of concord. We've looked at this before, but let's remind ourselves. To get the concord correct, you need to use a plural verb with a plural subject and a singular verb with a singular subject. This is something that you will probably be doing almost by instinct, but there are some situations that might get a bit tricky. Look at this sentence. My brother and I was on our way to school. What's wrong here? My brother is one person and I am one person, but together we are two people, so we need a plural verb. Of course, the correct way of writing this is, my brother and I were on our way to school. If you want a quick way to check if you are right, replace the subject with a pronoun to see if it is singular or plural. In this case, my brother and I could be replaced by we, which is plural. So the plural verb were is correct. Have a look at these sentences and try to correct the errors in the rule of concord. My aunties and uncles and grandparents is all on the way to our house. Thomas run faster than any other person I know. Nobody know what is in the final exam except the teacher. I think there might be a problem with my computer. Let's look at the correct answers to these rules of Concord. My aunties and uncles and grandparents are all on the way to our house. Thomas runs faster than any other person I know. Nobody knows what is in the final exam except the teacher. I think there might be a problem with my computer. Right, that wasn't too difficult, was it? Next, we need to proofread for the stylistic elements. As you will remember, these are the techniques that you use to give your writing a bit of va va voom and make it more interesting to read. In lesson 8, we learned that using a mixture of long and short sentences can really add texture to your writing. Let's recap some of these main points. Short sentences build excitement and tension. They give your writing action and make it seem urgent and dramatic. A short sentence can be a strong statement of fact. This means they could be used to wrap up an argument or make a point. Short sentences grab the reader's attention quickly, so they are probably quite good to use in an introduction. Long sentences give the writer a chance to develop ideas, explain concepts and make more complicated points or arguments. Long sentences are excellent for descriptions where the writer wants to paint a word picture with lots of detail. Long sentences can create a gentle, peaceful or slow effect. As we said, a good piece of writing will have long and short sentences that give your writing variety, pace and texture. Just like a good meal will have different flavours. In the same way, using different sentence patterns will also help to make your writing much more interesting. That brings us to the end of the lesson and the series on writing skills. But before we go, here is a final task. Make a checklist of things to check when proofreading any piece of writing. I hope that you have learned some useful skills to improve your writing and make the whole process more enjoyable. Just remember, good writing is a skill that you can master with a bit of practice and by remembering these simple techniques. From me, goodbye.